Were you guys quarantined when you got back to Korea? No, we weren't. We were fine. We, you know, we came back here. Um, you know, everyone just kind of did their safe distancing. Nobody really went out uh, for the first couple of weeks. And then, uh, so it, it was weird. I mean, just be, being in a clubhouse, it's just, you never know. Cause it's not a matter of, you know, between each other, but it's like, you don't know with the outside and everything. And then coming into a clubhouse, you're around 40, 50 different people. So it can, it can spread like wildfire. So what have you guys been doing to, because you've, you've started to play intra-squad games. How has your team and, and the uh, Lotte Giants sort of handled the situation going on in terms of trying to keep everybody safe? Yeah, I mean, we just, we've been super cautious about everything. I think a couple examples, uh, the first week or two, and even still, I mean, still when we're in the weight room and stuff, people just wear their mask when they're around like a couple of the guys, you know, working out. Uh, I, I mean, I think the video kind of went viral. They saw our inner squad game and they saw the players wearing masks on the field. They, uh, in the lunchroom, we actually got like a safeguard. So you're, you're like in your own little cubicle. I'll try to send you a picture later. Like plexiglass? Yeah. So like you're sitting, we, we got the tables and then for probably like a couple weeks ago, they put these like little plastic clear things. It looks like, kind of looks like you're in a prison wall cell thing, kind of like talking to the other person, but you know, what do you know about like, prison walls, Hank? Not prison walls, but you know, the, the little glass windows and all that. But um, so yeah, we've been doing that. And then, you know, if it, it was like, it's been kind of cold lately. So if it's like raining, we just kind of try to take it easy, make sure guys don't get sick. Yeah. So um, I, I think the, the organization and the coaches and everybody in the front office, they've been doing a really good job as far as just being cautious and making sure that everyone's uh, safe, uh, you know, first off. As you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're very well aware about the situation going on here with MLB and, and that season suspended and not really sure what's going to happen next. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, I don't know if, if since you guys are already starting to play that maybe you will set the blueprint as to how MLB should follow um, since we are, you know, a few weeks or whatever behind Korea in terms of, of where we're at with the pandemic. but. Um, it, how do you see it unfolding in terms of your uh, league playing baseball? So, I mean, they've been having weekly meetings as far as like the organizations and everybody in the whole league. And I think we're going to try to be able to start in May, like early May, maybe the first week of May. Um, I don't think we're going to have fans at least for the, for, for the time being. And then I think they're going to kind of slowly let people in, but um, it's weird. Yeah. It's just, it, it's because things and the schedule has been changing day by day. I mean, as far as we got here, like it feels like even our scrimmages, scrimmages against other teams or starting the season, everything's been kind of slowly getting pushed back. But I feel like we have a pretty good set date right now. And it's just a matter of, you know, what happens? Like, what, like, what are you going to do if, if a player on another team does get it? Are you going to just suspend everything or are you going to try to quarantine that certain player? So I think there's still – a lot of questions to be answered as far as, you know, this upcoming season. But as far as starting the games, I think we kind of have a pretty solid foundation right now for the first week of May. Because everything is so fluid and, and uncertain and things are changing constantly, I mean, do you guys feel ready? Because pretty soon Major League Baseball will be in a similar position where if they have a chance to go and play, you know, guys are going to be having, you know, spring training canceled and you're, 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 training regimen for preparing for a grueling season has been interrupted so what got you guys ready for for regular season games i think um you know being able i think we had a we were very fortunate to kind of have the luxury of just kind of staying on track as far as just not completely getting shut down mm -hmm. so you know i think our manager has done a great job as far as kind of pacing our players because mm -hmm. Like I said, even for our starting pitchers, I know in spring training back in the States, that's like kind of the biggest thing, right? Is just making sure that the starting pitchers are ready. So, you know, do you dial them back or do you kind of let them go and extend themselves out a little bit? So I think that's going to be, as far as back in the States too, the biggest challenges as far as them trying to get their season, you know, ready to get going. What's, uh, what's your favorite thing to eat out there in Korea? <laughs> I mean, I always, you know, growing up, I always ate my mom's Korean food and she would always cook. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's not quite like eating my mom's home cooking, but it, it's, it's awesome out here. The, the food's great. 
uh, the people are so nice and, and accommodating. And so it's, it's been, it's been fun experience so far, but, uh, you know me, I can't complain about any type of food. <laughs> when you're, we did that, we did the uh, food tour in Seattle together when you were with the angels. Yeah. I know I caught that fish with the glove. I that still was at, the, that. at Pike's market. That was so much fun. Hey, you, you bring, you bring up your mom. Um, I mean, I know you have some family in Seoul, Korea, but most of your family and your immediate family is, is in Orange County in Huntington Beach. So what's that been like for you to be, I know baseball takes you all over the world or takes you traveling, but to be this far away, especially at a time like this, uh, how's that been for you on a personal level? Yeah, it's been tough. I mean, just having to talk to my family and, you know, seeing them like kind of cooped up in the house a little bit and just trying to stay safe and doing all the measures that they can possible. Um, you know, I know as far as me and my wife, it's really difficult. At the time she was in Australia with me uh, for spring training. And then, you know, everyone kind of thought, oh, you know, Korea was, you know, outbreaks and everything. So we actually thought it was probably best for her to go back to the States. But by the time she went back, you know, everything kind of flip flopped and, you know, the Korean government did a really good job as far as like kind of containing everything and, and uh, putting a lockdown pretty quickly. So. It's tough. I mean, even if she comes out here, she's going to have to be quarantined. And it's uh, it, it's tough. I mean, it just really puts everything in perspective about baseball. But it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's really tough because we, we really don't know. Everything's so up in the air. And I know that's that's probably the same situation for, for a lot of people back home. I know you're not exactly mixed in with the general population because you're with a professional baseball team. But have people been generally following the the guidelines and the rules during this pandemic yeah i mean it's uh it's funny because you get text on your korean phone people are you know the government kind of like informed you know if there was any outbreaks in certain cities and they tell you to kind of stay inside um it's been slowing down here but as we all know the severity of this whole thing you know it can spread so quickly at any time so i think people are for the most part in busan they're living a they're pretty normal life, but they've been trying to stay safe as much as possible. I mean, you get temperature checks anywhere you go, like if you go inside a mall or a restaurant, um, you know, they, they check you, they're making sure you do all this stuff, they're covering up. And so it's, um, they, they're living pretty normally, but they're, they're, they're staying very safe. As a catcher, you're used to wearing a mask all the time anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. <laughs> I really appreciate your ha your time, Hank, and uh, I'm supposed to let you know from Mayaneta. Stay with it. All right, man? <laughs> oh, man. Tell that guy to stop posting Instagram videos of him deadlifting 500 pounds. He should be lifting some more wine glasses. Oh, we should all be lifting more wine glasses. Uh, thank you so much. It's so good to see you, and I really wish you the best, Hank. You're good all people. Right, thank it. you. All right. All right. Uh -huh. Thanks.